Greetings! In today's video, I'm just gonna talk about stuff. I have sort of an idea of what I want to chat about, and we will go from there. There's a story about a pottery class, as in class about how to make, you know, pots out of clay. And one of the teachers decides to run an experiment with two batches of students. He says, essentially, one batch of students has to bring the most perfect pot. It doesn't matter at all how many pots they make during the semester. It just matters that they bring one pot and it be the best pot that could, they could possibly bring. The other batch of students has to make as many pots as possible. The result is, very interesting, that the batch of students that has to bring the largest amount of volume of pots actually ends up making, of course, more pots, but also of better quality overall. And I guess that's the start of my story. I want to talk about a few builds that I made and then just decided to remake because doing it again would give me a better result than trying to work on the specific thing until I got it perfect. So the first one is going to be this Drake Corsair and its newer brother, which is over here. Essentially, main issue with this Corsair, too small, too little downward thrust, possibly the correct amount of guns, but I just didn't, not maneuverable enough, would end up in the water a lot because not enough downward thrust and it, it just sank all the time. And so I made a new one and it's more maneuverable, it has more firepower, it's probably just more effective overall and it's the fact that I made them so close to each other it, al it also, because it's bigger, it allows me to have more detailing on it, which is interesting. The fact that I made them within like a couple of days of one another, I was making the second one already, means that I could just take all of the knowledge that I'd accrued from this and just transfer it over one to one and get a far better result. I could have just worked on this and tried to extend this and make it larger, bigger, whatever, whatever, it would never have worked as well as just starting over. It, this is, you know, I'm kind of, I have a few friends that build one thing for six months and they only work on that for six months. It's kind of weird for me. I would much prefer to work on something new every day then work on the same thing for six months and then find out that the thing that you've been working on for six months isn't nearly as good as you thought it could become. I feel like I get a lot better a lot quicker at the game by building new things over and over again. My second example is going to be... Uh, I need complexity mod, 1900. I hope that's correct. My second example is going to be the new spaceships I've been working on. Against my better judgment, using the complexity mod because you it's really bad. <laughs> Against my better judgment, I attempted to use complexity mod to make this spaceship. The so my main issue with complexity mod is it takes a bunch of my limitations away. I don't have to be as eager to keep things small and concise. And therefore, you know, you end up with something enormous. This is not a problem in itself, but I just it becomes it becomes very jarring to have no limitations. Funnily enough, it becomes something that's you just want to keep building forever and it feels like you're never going to get to the end of it. 
And that's really how I felt with the spaceship. Um, the other thing that was working against me here is I left a lot of gaps because I my, my laptop was slowing down already. It wasn't worth me trying to fill in every single gap and then not be able to spawn it in at all, right? So I there's a lot of parts where I could have filled it in and I didn't really want to and so on and so on. It's an imperfect thing. It's the first thing I built with complexity mod. I went way overboard with it. I built something that I'm not necessarily, I'm, you know, I'm happy with it. It could be a lot better though. And so I went in again, made something different. And well, you'll see, I completely, I just took the front off this thing and made it the same, but this is smaller. It has more firepower because, well, this one isn't supposed to be a combat ship. It, I just decided to add a couple guns. I might actually take the guns off. If this is going to become the combat ship, I might just keep this one as a cargo vessel or an exploration vessel, which I'm really inclined to do at this point. This one's got more armor. It's like several hundred complexity less. It's, it's got more power to it because I've because I have several hundred complexity less, I have a bunch of UFO engines in there, which makes it more powerful, technically. And it's just got less panel gaps. It's got less uh, weird wonky things going on with it. In, like you can't see inside it. One of the reasons this one's so big is because it has a giant cargo hold, uh, which can hold um, a bunch of people's cars. Let me see. Yeah, so I can open the giant cargo hold, I can hold people's cars in there, I can airdrop them out of the car, out of the spaceship. But, you know, it's it's cool and all. I, it just could be better, it could not be full of holes. And so you build it again, and you do another thing. And it's maybe not better, but it's different. And you've learned a whole bunch of stuff from it. Right. The final example I'm going to bring up is two birds. So actually, let me, yeah, let me start at the beginning. I made a bird. The bird flies okay. Then I made another bird. It's going to settle in. Okay. And then I made a third bird. All right, so these are the three birds I made. The first one is completely an ornithopter. This is just the introduction to the story. Basically, I wanted a bird that would just fly through ornithopter power. And then, just as I did with the insect-like ornithopter, I was like, I'll make stuff that, uh, I'll make a version that's not ornithopter powered, and it's just an animatronic, like an, a simulation of an animal, basically. And so this thing came by. And as you can see, it's really big, it's really lanky, it has preposterously too much logic. I gave it a freaking walking animation, like the logic at the bottom here, at the, at the tail end, is a um, walking animation that really doesn't work because how could you possibly realistically walk something this big on legs that are su supported by small hinges, right? It has a bunch of logic for the legs folding up. It has a bunch of logic for the wings folding in when it's standing. It's cool. It just, it's just so bloated for its own good. There's just too many things on it, right? It's a lot of the things that I do, I work with the motto that simplicity is strength, like strength through simplicity. If anybody knows about destiny lore, that's the sword logic. I, you know, I do my bomb logic a whole bunch because complexity and logic gates and everything. I do things complicated, but 
the sword logic helps a lot in a lot of circumstances. That's why most of my paint jobs aren't very elaborate. Because the shape in itself should hold its own without needing elaborate paint jobs. And so this is this becomes too much bomb logic for me. It's too much complexity, too much. It's so complex that it starts hurting itself to the point where I accidentally, well, not so accidentally, I had complexity mod turned on for it. And I realized that I'd crossed over 700 when I really didn't want to. And, and so I had to go in and do some surgeries to reduce it which kind of took away some of the charm of it as well and so i decided that well as it falls off the carrier i was gonna do something more simple and more concise and more straightforward and so this is it and this version flies a lot better it doesn't have as elaborate poses for standing or flying or whatever but it it's simpler and it works more fluidly and so this one is far more of a joy to fly than the one that well it left okay <laughs> this one's much more of a joy to fly than the other one because it's just more con it's more fluid it it, it doesn't require you to fight its complexity in order to, in order to operate it and yeah it's just it it makes me happier this is all just to put into perspective uh don't get uh, my main suggestion for trail makers is don't get too attached to the idea of one creation that you keep working on and keep modifying or and so on and so forth be, be more flexible with it if something is not working, starting over is not always a bad idea. Of course, I do encourage people to finish the old project before they start over, because getting to the end mark is absolutely going to give you more insight over where you want to go with your next version. But yeah, I guess a bit of a rambly video not too many rails on what i wanted to say i just wanted to express some of my feelings and show you guys a lot of my thought process when i'm building stuff trying to make things better yeah um complexity mod is terrifying by the way <laughs> just i hope you've enjoyed thanks for watching and i will see you in the future.